Okay, good afternoon. Um, my name is Charles. This is Mark. I'm, we're going to have a, 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 more, a bit more of a formal introduction later on. And this is the uh, workshop on the customization automation of simulation processes using NX. So the idea today is for us to give a bit more of a, you know, I, I don't want to say hands-on because, we, well, it's hands-on for us, not for you, but uh, more of a live demo and examples of what you can do in terms of automation in NX. Uh, we saw a lot of examples of what can be done very quickly this morning, but we're going to have like very uh, more more specific and, and live examples of what we can do. So uh, just to start, uh, we're going to be presenting together today. So this is my colleague, uh, Mark Benson. Hi. Yeah. You can introduce yourself. Yeah, if you, so yeah. Uh, Almost a year? No. Oh, nine months. Nine, nine months. Um, my uh, official title is Solution Architect. I've got around 20 odd years of NX experience. Before it was even NX, it was Unigraphics when I started. And uh, around 17 years here in industry as well. Um, and my main background has been as a, as a design engineer, um, as well as uh, sort of using a lot of uh, analysis tools and, and sort of feeding off the data from the analysis tools. Very good. Also, Maya, UK's first employee. Yeah, I'm 001. There you go. <laughs> and uh, my name is Charles Boivin. I'm the uh, manager of the customization services group. We call it Maya. So we're the, we're the group doing, uh, you know, NX Open customization. We saw Fombi talked about uh, that a bit this morning at Rolls-Royce. We're doing that, but we're doing a lot of other projects. Uh, also have a bit more than 20 years of simulation experience. Uh, come from it uh, mostly from a CFD background. Also did some work on, on mesh generation itself. So a lot of uh, on tools that are used for simulations. Uh, I've been at Maya now for about 11 years. Uh, started there uh, in the CFD development group. Um, and now I've slowly migrated over to more like customization. So in terms of talking about automating and uh, automation and customization of simulation uh, processes, I think, uh, I think you're covered. We got the right experience here for that. So um, <clears throat> let's get going. Uh, just to give a, a brief overview of what we're going to talk about today. So this is a bit of a longer session. Uh, we plan on having three different demos on three different topics. I'm gonna, first going to start by giving a, a brief overview of what uh, is available in terms of automation, uh, the tools that are available in NX for automation, NX and SimCenter. If I say NX, I mean SimCenter. If I say SimCenter, uh, anyway, so you, you, you understand. Uh, so when we're talking about simulation, it's mostly SimCenter, of course, uh, but NX, SimCenter, interchangeable in my mind personally. Uh, so don't formalize your cell phone, if I, if I use the wrong word. And um, then we, we'll, we'll end if you have any questions, then at the, we'll have that at the end of the session. Um, that being said, I think we'll open the floor to questions uh, for during every demo, I'd say after, but even during, like if, if we're going through it, uh, it's gonna be a very informal way of doing things. So if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand, ask anything. Okay, so let's start with that. So. Automation and customization. We see value in, uh, uh, for automation and customization in four major areas. So in, and for any project, we'll usually see benefits in, in even in more than one. So the four are basically, and that was touched upon this morning, knowledge. So capturing the knowledge in the company. Uh, we have also functionality, which this is to extend the functionality that's already available in the commercial product. Uh, integration, this ties in with functionality, but this is more about being able to really integrate in the workflow that you have at your own company and to also perhaps um, integrate some in-house or third-party tools that you're already using that are not integrated into uh, SimCenter world but we can do that, and also uh, efficiency uh, through automation. So just to talk about that a bit more, capturing the knowledge of the organization is very important. Um, the idea there is that through automation and customization, we can standardize the processes through which 
um, you're, you're delivering products in the end. And that leads to increased reliability. And also um, what we see is very often it, it helps um, define what the workflows are really across the company. Very often you have little pockets of knowledge in different areas, but when you try to actually integrate all of that together from design to simulation and back, uh, you end up with, with a lot of knowledge that is gained that way just through that. Also, of course, we want to be able to create new functionality. That's usually what most people think of when they, they talk about, uh, they think of customization at least. Uh, if you need personalized features that your organization requires, then we can usually do that. Uh, we'll have very specific examples of how we can do these things in, in the workshop today. Uh, and, um, you know, be it something very simple as I, I need a new button that does this, or I need, uh, or it can be very mu much more complex, well, whole new interfaces, for example, and things like that. Uh, the, the integration of the independent tools and processes. So right now in your organization, you might have in-house tools a bit like what uh, Fumbi was talking about at Rolls-Royce this morning, uh, or you're using third-party tools, th third-party software that are not integrated into SimCenter and NX right now. We can help with that. We can gather the data and bring it in NX. We can take the NX data and export it to other tools. All of these things can be done. And finally, and this is what most people think of when we talk about automation, is uh, of course it's automating for efficiency. If you have this workflow that takes, you know, uh, a designer hours or even just long minutes, uh, we can usually do that. Uh, we can usually increase the productivity of that person, and as a consequence of a whole group or organization, uh, through targeted automation. We don't need to do everything at once. We can usually do different sections and tie them together uh, as we need. All right, so currently in NX and SimCenter, these are the different, uh, I guess, APIs or, or avenues you have for automation and programming. Uh, so I'm just going to go briefly through them. I'm not going to cover all of them today. Uh, we will focus on one in particular. So the first one that we have there is journaling. Uh, are, is everybody pretty much familiar, with, at least with NX or in, in SimCenter? Yeah, so, so you must be, you, you're aware of what journaling is. You can record what's happening. Uh, the, nice, the interesting thing about journaling in NX is that we're not, uh, it, NX is not recording the actions of the users. It's recording the actual, um, and by actions, I mean uh, click there and then click there, click there. It's actually recording the intentions, the the what it what it means, what these click these clicks, sorry, these clicks meant. Um, so it's very useful, it's especially for for as a first step sometimes for automation and customization. Uh, but we'll we'll talk about uh, that a bit more in detail. There's knowledge fusion, uh, very often known as KF. This is mostly on the modeling side, used for things like Checkmate, uh, if, you want, if you need to do validation of, of your models, for example. The NX Open API, which is the one we're going to talk about uh, mostly, is, is really the, the more current one being actively developed at uh, Siemens right now. And this is the one that we, we rely on for most of the work that we're doing. The OpenSea API is sort of the ancestor to the NX Open API. Uh, dates back to the UG days, um, and uh, you're familiar. You, you were using that one. Uh, it's still around. It's still available, but it's not being maintained or it's not being uh, updated with uh, with anything. So it's basically the functionality that was there about 10 years ago, 12 years ago. It's still there. Uh, Manuscript is used for customization of uh, your menu bars, toolbars, ribbons. Uh, these kinds of things. Uh, it's got it, its own little uh, syntax, let's call it. It's not a language, but a syntax. Uh, there's also then the uh, NX Dialog Designer, what we call the Block Styler. Uh, we're going to touch on that briefly today. That allows um, programmers to actually create dialogues that actually look and feel exactly what the, the, the NX dialogues are. 
And finally, there's also SNAP, which stands for Simple NX Application Programming, um, which we won't talk about. It's, it's, a, it's a subset of what's covered in NX Open. It's meant to be simpler, uh, but it doesn't cover nearly as much as, as what NX Open does. So as we mentioned, as I mentioned before, we're going to focus today on NX Open. And so the NX Open API, how does it work? Very briefly. So we have, since about version 5 or 6 of NX, every single dialog that, has, that is added or created and added to the product needs to have an NX Open layer underneath it. So what that means is that a dialog doesn't actually um, act upon the NX da data or the NX model directly. It always goes through this NX Open API. So if a programmer at Siemens needs to develop a new feature, they need to also develop that NX Open API first. And then they have tools that will communicate with that API that then itself will manipulate the data in the model. So that's the, the next step, the NX core there. So what that means is that allows us to write custom software that also hooks into the NX Open API and effectively behaves exactly the same way as a regular dialog in NX would. So uh, given that, that this, this is a really neat piece of technology that they've built in. It's very useful. Um, and and it, it provides us with ample opportunities to just do very nice things. And, and with, there aren't, there aren't very uh, many disadvantages to using the NX Open API. The only thing that sometimes happens is that for old functionality, you have little gaps in the NX Open <coughs> API uh, coverage sometimes. But I'd say 95% of what's in modeling and simulation and, and things like that is, is covered by the NX Open API, which is its own problem because it's vast. Um, so the strengths of this API. Um, so the NX architecture dictates, as I was saying, that the API needs to be used in dialogues. So any, and when I say dialogues, it means menus and, and all of that. So any new feature in NX needs to have that layer. Um, the actions are the NX actions. So what the dialogue ends up calling as the NX core functionality is what ends up being recorded in the journal, not what the, where the user clicked or things like that. And that's how it ends up being repeatable. Um, the NX Open API actually has uh, several languages. Uh, it, it's accessible, sorry, via several languages. And all the languages are generated effectively from the same data. So this NX Open API is actually in its own language. That's not C++, not C, Java, or anything like that. It's a, it's a made-up language that's just used at Siemens. And from there, they derive the APIs in the different supported languages. Um, and typically, the changes between uh, different versions of that API are very small. So you won't get very many changes that you need to make to support your tools from version to version. Now, that being said, it happens, it changes. Sometimes the API doesn't change, but the underlying behavior changes. Uh, so there's always little surprises going from versions to versions. Uh, now, it's not a perfect API. <laughs> Nothing is. Uh, so. The, the downside, I'd say, is that because of the architecture that I presented uh, with this you know, middle layer of the NX Open API uh, from between Dialog and NX itself, uh, the methods are mostly UI driven. And then sometimes that's not the best API one could have to be able to do things programmatically. Uh, so it's, it's a bit tedious a bit sometimes that you, what you need to do because of that. Uh, the documentation. <laughs> is there. Uh, it's, however, it's limited. There are some methods that sometimes are not very well documented or at all. And uh, I was mentioning the journals before as being a very nice initial step into doing things uh, for automation. These journals end up containing a lot of noise because uh, as you're making changes in the dialogue, for example, it's recording every single change, not just when you're clicking OK or Apply, for example. So you need to be able to sort of decipher and see, see the, uh, 
the main the main actions that are taking place in the uh, the journals so that requires a bit of uh, um, back and forth sometimes to get the right things from the journals. I'm, and I mentioned before that it's available in several languages. These are the languages that the API is available in. So uh, first of all, it supports the .NET um, framework, C Sharp and VB. This, of course, is only available for Windows. Um, if you want to do cross-platform development for NX Open, you need to go with one of the, uh, the next three languages, Java, C++, and Python. Python is the latest one that was added. I believe it was added in NX10, if I remember correctly. Uh, initial implementation in NX10 really came into its own in NX11. Um, and of course, uh, in there you have a few interpreted languages, a few that are compiled. Uh, the advantages of the interpreted languages, in, at least for, for workshops like this, are, are immense. So we're going to be today focusing on, on Python. It's our new favorite uh, language uh, for this. Uh, it allows us to uh, really streamline the process. There's no DLLs to deal with. There's no, like, you don't need to compile your code. You can just run it directly. And because it's a thin layer that then calls NX directly, there's, no, there's not much of a performance hit in terms of NX itself. All right. So I'm going to hand this off to Mark now for the, for the first demo.